The expansion sales cycle is the time it takes your customer to get value from your product and then buy more of it. So you need to figure out the value creation process and then figure out that you place the constraint. It's your fault. And then you need to place the constraint somewhere else, like preferably at the very end, so that you just get the customer to just invest as much as they can and then you just tax the outcome here. And this was actually a sort of an actual uh, customer I had uh, in, uh, in Europe a couple of years back. And they provided an AI platform for banks. And essentially, we, we mapped out, well, how do banks get value out of an AI platform? And it went something like this. Well, if I'm a bank and I want to get value out of an AI platform, then I first decide that I want to do it, and then I hire a team. So I said, well, we are going to have the AI team, and these guys are over here, and they get a budget, and they like go to AI. And then what the AI team does is, well, they start to find all the data sources and the tooling and so forth and build integrations in order to be able to then do AI. Then they start to train and deploy some models, right? So they say, okay, so now we have uh, some, some data sources and we sort of build some machine learning models or some GPTs or whatever it is. And then those models then do something, right? They create like chat messages to customers or they create credit scores or they whatever handle processes, whatever it is, right? So the whole idea of doing the AI in the bank is to get some sort of specific outcome. And that's the point, right? So the bank isn't doing AI in order to have an AI team. The team is an input, so in, out. The team is an input that I need in order to be able to get all the tooling and data in place so that I can create the models, so that I can have the improved KPIs or the increased revenue or whatever it is, so the outcome. So all the value chain does is just the necessary steps in order for me to get whatever I want at the end of it. And if our solution is, let's say, providing the, the platform to all this, let's say that we're having the AI platform that the team can work in, so they are the users, and then they connect all the data sources and we integrate them and like table of all the data and then they get to design some models and then they get to deploy them into the business and then track the, the outcomes that are there. Okay, great. So we support the entire value chain with our software. Great. Now, we can choose a pricing metric depending on where in the value chain we are, right? So at the team stage, we might say something like, oh, we're going to have per user. And over here in the data source, we might have per gigabyte. And here we might have per model, right? And here we might have revenue that the bank generates. The client that I was telling you about that had this, they actually priced per user. They had the following problem that the bank would say, well, we really like the software. We really want to do AI. It's like a strategic um, priority for us. Um, but how many users do we need? Because of the value chain, my client hadn't realized that this is an input, but what they want is this. So whenever you're trying to sell them something at the early stages of the value chain, at the beginning, the customer will say, well, everything at this end is a cost, is something I have to spend in order to get this. And I would rather spend less and I would rather get more, right? So whenever you are saying, how about spending more? The customer will respond with, well, how about less, right? So the banks would always say, well, how many users do we need? And then my client would say, well, the more users you have, you know, the more you can do the value chain, the more money you can get at the end. So you have to do that song and dance in sales. But then the customer would use and say, well, let's start with whatever, how many users is the minimum? And their minimum was five users. So they always sold five users first. Then comes the expansion sales. They sell five users. The five users start to use the platform, they start to connect all the data sources, they start to create the tables and so forth. Then they start to get ideas from models, they train the models, they deploy the models, and then the models work and they generate money for the bank. And then what happens is that now they have a overview of the ROI or the return on investment of the software. So they say, well, we bought five users for let's say 50,000 and we got 500 million out in the end fantastic return let's buy five more right so now they buy 10 users so what we also see here is that we had an expansion sale they went from five to ten 
but the customer had to go through the value chain. So they bought here, and then the users did something, they did something else, and we had an outcome. And what usually happens is that it's not just an input and output, you can also create a timeline on this. So you say, well, how long does it take my typical customer to run through this value chain? And if you're selling AI to banks, it's probably, what, two years, right? So they set a team, they have to do the thing, and like if you're lucky, it's a year, right? Before the bank realizes, oh, this works really great and we're really happy with it and we want to buy more. So for this particular customer, what we did was we said, well, we actually want to increase adoption, we want to speed up expansion. So what we did was say, well, users are now free. So you can add as many users as you want. Everyone in the bank, like add all your customers, we don't care, like a million users. You can run all the data that you run, it runs in your infrastructure. So it's like, it's, it's your headache if you run like a trillion terabytes of this. And you can train all the models that you want, but like we're gonna create like another definition here, which is like deployed models, like models that are actually working in the bank to generate an outcome somewhere. Those we charge for. By charging for a deployed model, what happened was that the bank would now add more users. So you're like, anybody that wants an account. And then everybody could play around with the data, get new ideas for models. Some of these models would actually work and get deployed. So much quicker, the bank would now deploy more models. And then the deployed models would very quickly generate a return for the bank. And then the bank would go out and just pour in additional users because they were free. And then they would generate a lot of different data tables because that was essentially also free. It, like, it disappeared in their infrastructure costs. And then more models would be created. So we had an expansion cycle that started here, right? So we had to realize this, go all the way back here, and then run the entire value chain once. And then by just changing the pricing model, because we had to go out and catch this user here, and instead we just catch this one here, and then we just reduced it to this, right? It's just a much quicker and faster expansion. This is one of the things that I work with a lot whenever I see one of my clients saying, well, we want more expansion revenue. We have issues with the, like our customers is adopting slowly. They're not buying it as fast as we think they should. They could get much more value out of the solution if they just bought more of it. Okay, great. That's probably a constraint that you're creating in your commercial model. So you need to figure out the value creation process and then figure out that you place the constraint. It's your fault. And then you need to place the constraint somewhere else, like preferably at the very end, so that you just get the customer to just invest as much as they can, and then you just tax the outcome here. The idea is that expansion actually usually runs some sort of kind of a feedback loop inside the customer's business, and you decide partially, at least, the length of that feedback loop depending on how you structure your pricing. It's a, it could be an aha moment uh, for some of you, especially if you have let's say front-loaded pricing models, as I call them, like the ones that charge the inputs of the, of the customer's value chain, as opposed to having a back-loaded on output-based pricing model that charges the output. It can significantly speed up the expansion sales cycle. So I hope it makes sense to you. I hope it's useful. Thank you.